Welcome to the 2018 School of Kinesiology Commencement Ceremony. I'm Tom Templin, Associate Dean for Faculty and Undergraduate Affairs, and I have the privilege of being your host today. Before we begin the program, as a courtesy to others, please take a moment to silence your cell phones so we can enjoy the celebration uninter uninterrupted. I would also like to remind guests to re please remain in your seats during the awarding of degrees. Thank you. What an incredible day it is. A beautiful spring day in this magnificent Hill Auditorium full of happy, energetic, and proud graduates surrounded by their families, friends, our faculty and staff who are here to celebrate your success. We are so excited to have a very, very special commencement speaker, Janet Marie Smith, Vice President of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who has a distinguished career in the sport industry. Janet, welcome. And I am proud to say that we'll, we will be led in song today by two of our very own students in kinesiology. Madison Rotner from Malibu, California, and Jeffrey Walker from Brighton, Michigan, will provide their musical talent. And I am sure you will be quite impressed by these two wonderful singers. And as we enjoy this beautiful auditorium, we are directly across from the Krauss Building, the site of our school's new home in 2020. This ceremony will be filled with hugs, smiles, laughter, and tears, and reminders of how far you have come since your first days on campus. You've had research opportunities, internships, study abroad, clinical rotations, group assignments, and other intellectually challenging projects that have added to your academic portfolio. You have enjoyed great social, cultural, and athletic events, including Michigan's recent Final Four adventures in men's basketball and hockey. And probably most importantly, you have made friendships that will last for a lifetime. This afternoon is about bittersweet endings and exciting new beginnings. You have distinguished yourselves in a population of high achieving students who have worked hard and accomplished a great deal. Today's events will leave you with many wonderful memories of a celebration shared with family, friends, faculty, and staff of the School of Kinesiology. We all know that it's a team effort to make it to graduation today. Graduates, please acknowledge your family, friends, and faculty and staff with a round of applause. Thank you, you may sit. Our celebration will move along quickly, and at the conclusion of the ceremony, the platform party and graduates will depart immediately to the second floor of the Michigan League, just across the plaza, where there'll be plenty of photo opportunities and refreshments. There'll be more on this later. And now, please welcome and rise as Madison Rotner, our graduating health and fitness student, sings our national anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your hats and mortarboards. Please rise. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang glare, the bombs bursting in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave or the land?
Thank you, Madison. It won't surprise you that Madison is headed to New York City to try her hand at Broadway. So best wishes. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dean Lori Plotz-Snyder, the Dean of the School of Kinesiology. Dr. Plotz-Snyder became the leader of our school in July 2016 after a very successful tenure as a professor and department head at Syracuse University, followed by a distinguished career as a lead scientist in exercise physiology at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston. Dean Plotz-Snyder, on behalf of our faculty, staff, and students, I thank you for your leadership over the past two years. Please welcome Dean Lori Plotz-Snyder. As the Dean of the School of Kinesiology, it is really a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this wonderful celebration of our 2018 graduates. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge our amazing faculty. Faculty, please stand. And let's give them a round of applause. You may sit down. It's really an exciting time to be in kinesiology. According to the publication Inside Higher Education, over the past decade, the number of undergraduates in kinesiology programs across the United States has increased by 50%. This is reflected here in an increased application rate for all of our programs. We've received the largest number of freshman applications to date for, the, for this coming up fall, and it is getting more and more difficult and more competitive to be admitted. Fewer than 20% of our applicants will be accepted for the coming fall semester. One of the reasons the demand to enter kinesiology is increasing is because the opportunities after you graduate. The opportunities in athletic training, health and fitness, movement science, and sport management are rapidly growing. Miss Michigan kinesiology graduates in all of our majors and all of our degrees are valued, sought after, and respected. All of us here this afternoon know that Michigan kinesiology students are energetic and effective leaders. We've seen that. They participate in organizations such as Michigan Health Aid, the Sport Business Association, the Organization for Athletic Training Students, the Michigan Sport Business Conference, Phi Epsilon Kappa, Student Government, Exercise is Medicine, and many others. They have won a host of awards from our school, from the university, and even from national organizations. Many of our students are international travelers gaining significant global experience to enrich their education. They volunteer as teaching assistants in a wide range of kinesiology classes. They conduct research in labs across campus, publish in scholarly professional journals, and have written for the Michigan Daily or mgoblue.com. Our students have worked on and off campus, competed on athletic and academic teams, excelled in independent study opportunities, interned with sports organizations, companies, hospitals, clinics, and schools. They are active, motivated, and very busy. The students of the class of 2018 leave kinesiology with strong optimism as they begin the next phase of their lives. Many of today's movement science graduates are going on to medical school or programs in physical therapy, physician assistant, or public health. Others will begin careers as healthcare workers or researchers. 11 of our movement science graduates will enter the exciting new world of intraoperative neuromonitoring. <laughs> but wait, wait, there's more. Our athletic trainers will take their conditioning and healing skills to the sidelines of high schools, college, or professional sports teams. Many will begin graduate studies in areas like physical therapy, biomechanics, and sports science. Graduate school is also the next step for many of our health and fitness majors. 
Others will work as health educators, community and corporate wellness providers, and athletic performance trainers, using their knowledge to build a healthier community, workplace, and world. A large percentage of our sport management graduates will begin climbing the ladder at sports franchises, media companies, and other corporate organizations. Others will continue with postgraduate studies in business, sport administration, and law. I know that each of you, graduates and your families, are as proud of your accomplishments at Michigan as we, your faculty mentors and advisors, are of you. As you take the next steps in your life, carry our sincere congratulations and our best wishes with you. It is especially fitting that such a great graduating class would get to benefit from the wisdom of our exceptionally accomplished commencement speaker, Ms. Janet Marie Smith. She is a renowned architect and urban planner. Ms. Smith is currently Senior Vice President of Planning and Development at the Los Angeles Dodgers. She also contributes her time and talent to our school's Sport Management Advisory Board. Ms. Smith holds a bachelor's degree in architecture from Mississippi State University and a master's degree in urban planning from the City College of New York. She's probably best known in the baseball world for her work on the influential Oriole Park at Camden Yards under the leadership of Orioles president and CEO, Larry Lucino. Ms. Smith worked for the Orioles from 1989 to 1994 as Vice President of Planning and Development during the design and the construction of the park. Opening in 1992, Camden Yards immediately became the standard bearer for a new wave of traditional baseball parks that have built, been built in subsequent years. Ms. Smith played an instrumental role in the design of the ballpark, creating a unique state-of-the-art facility that beautifully blends with the urban context of downtown Baltimore while taking inspiration from baseball parks built in the early 20th century. Please help me welcome Janet Marie Smith. Thank you very much. Working in baseball, I've heard the national anthem sung literally thousands of times, but that was amazing. That was really amazing. Um, I can't tell you what an honor and an intimidating invitation it is to be asked to speak at your graduation. I'm sure you've mentally given me two options, either be inspirational or be short. Um, <laughs> I think I can do short, but I'm going to try for both. I've been in awe of this campus and particularly the caliber of its students ever since Dr. Mark Rosentraub first introduced me to the University of Michigan almost 10 years ago. I thank you profusely for that. I've learned not only to spell kinesiology, uh, but I've come to understand it as one of the most interesting of the applied science fields. And your sports management program is one of the most respected in this country. I know you have many choices for speakers for this commencement ceremony, and I'm really humbled to be asked to be here. I wish I was in the same league as someone like Steve Jobs, and I could provide short, concise advice. While everyone wanted to hear his secret of success with Apple, his commencement speech instructions were this, always wear sunscreen. <laughs> it's a reminder that we're all the same no matter how society measures our accomplishments. Conrad Hilton had a similar approach to dispensing advice. He famously said after a lifetime of working in hotels, he only knew one thing for certain, the shower curtain goes on the inside of the bathtub. <laughs> Both remarks by these accomplished CEOs are reminders that no one has a lock on success and no one has a crystal ball on the future either. Every experience will change us. Last fall, my son Jack was about to start college as a freshman, and I was about to teach a college studio in architecture for the first time in my life. My family chided me about taking this class on without giving up any work responsibilities, and my response was, it was only for one semester. 
Anything, any, anybody can do something for one semester, I mused aloud. Jack processed this comment and he responded, yes, it's just one semester, but I'll be a totally different person by the end of it. That's true on the eve of college, and it's true on the eve of your graduation. The experiences that you are about to have will change your life. It's our job to make sure that it's for the better. I'm well aware that I was asked to speak to you because I work for the Los Angeles Dodgers. But as a graduate of the Mississippi State School of Architecture, I can tell you that as cool as that job sounds, it was not even remotely on my radar screen. I went to architecture school because I didn't want to practice, but I didn't want to practice as a traditional architect. I grew up loving cities, kind of the way other people grow up loving dogs. I loved the built environment, and I wanted to do something that would put me squarely in the middle of a city scene. I was not an A student. I was a B student on a good day. I participated enthusiastically in every extracurricular opportunity that came along, from campus politics to national architecture forums. I planned into the semester parties, school sanctioned and otherwise. And all those experiences helped me as a professional every bit as much as what I learned in the classroom. I moved to New York City before the school ever handed out diplomas. I found a position doing project management for a big urban development at the tip of Manhattan, Battery Park City. It was a really lucky point in time. The project had drifted for decades, but it kicked into high gear the year I started to work. I took in everything I could from that job, from every colleague, every consultant, every developer, and the city itself. And while I was there, I got a master's degree in urban planning, which gave some mental order to the information that I had absorbed. My subject, was, for, my subject in school was a case study for Baltimore. And even though I only visited the city a few times, I felt I understood their attempt to reinvent themselves by building attractions like the aquarium and the science center to bring people downtown. Five years later, while working in Los Angeles in a dead-end job and looking for an excuse to get back to the East Coast, I learned that Baltimore was going to build a new baseball park in downtown. By then, I had decided I didn't really like jobs. I liked projects, and this one sounded just right for me. The baseball fan in me hated to see the Baltimore Orioles leave their beloved Memorial Stadium, but the idea that you could reinvigorate a city by scripting three million fans a year into downtown was a really powerful planning idea. I wrote a letter to Larry Lucchino, president, of the CEO, president and CEO of the Orioles, and 60 days later, I was on the payroll of a Major League Baseball team. For sure, I came in through the back door, and 25 years later, I still feel like the black sheep in sports, armed as I am with architecture and planning degrees. Larry told me years later that had I had experience in sports, he would not have hired me. He wanted to reinvent the definition of a ballpark and he didn't want someone in charge who would work by the industry norm. Since I wasn't in the industry, I didn't even know what the norm was. I took in everything I'd learned in New York about building contextual buildings and growing a city and married that with his vision to construct a quote, old fashioned ballpark with modern amenities. And I found myself on the forefront of what became a national movement to return major league sports to center cities. I'm not alone in following a maze rather than a path into work that I love. I'm a firm believer in the adage, don't wait for an opportunity, just create it. My sidekick at the Red Sox during the years we were re renovating Fenway Park was a drama and theater major. Now he's head of Major League Baseball's ballpark operations and sustainability. My summer intern during that time was an MIT physics major, but now she's vice president of real estate for the San Francisco Giants. Of the four of us in the planning department at the Dodgers, one has a degree in sociology and humanities, Another was plucked out of the scouting department where he'd gone on a lark after working in an engineering firm. And my favorite story, our current intern who found the post for th this particular job while looking for a concessionaire position to bring in extra cash during the summer. The fact that she had served as campus vice president of the National Society of Black Engineers at her college was a dead giveaway that she had leadership skills even if she didn't yet have a diploma. So don't think any of this is serendipity. Some of the best talent in the workplace comes from professionals who's, who crossed over careers. Otherwise, you're just recycling the same ideas. So don't worry about whether your path is logical. Your value is in what you bring to the job, not the trajectory you took. 
Gabe Kapler, who was a 57th round draft pick by the Detroit Tigers and now manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, was director of player personnel for the Dodgers a few years ago during the time that I've been there. When Gabe took the job with us, I told him we'd sorted out some beautiful photos of Dodger greats, and if he wanted any of those hanging on his wall, we'd send them to his office. His reply, I see baseball every day, all day long. I need something more for inspiration. And that's how it came to be that in his office at Citizens Bank Park hang photos of Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Simone Bolivar, Albert Einstein, Muhammad Ali, and Jackie Robinson. These are people who never gave up, for whom success was equated with challenging work, daily pursuits in the face of adversity, and whose life goals eclipsed the ordinary and the predictable. In their own way, they were each true to Einstein's challenge, try not to be a man of success, rather become a man of value. People of value find a way to contribute wherever they can. When we were working on Oriole Park at Camden Yards, the first baseball-only park to open in an urban setting in over 70 years, we sought input from many sources, but we tried to filter it so the design would be coherent and hold together. Maryland Governor William Donald Schaefer insisted that the ballpark be downtown, and Orioles president advocated for a traditional ballpark. But it was a fan who suggested elevating the bullpens for pitchers beyond the outfield fence so that all fans could see who was warming up for either team. And without Frank Robinson, then our manager, the only player to ever win MVP in both leagues and the first African-American manager in baseball, well, Oriole Park at Camden Yards could have just been another sport venue. Frank understood firsthand what it was like to play in the quirky, asymmetrical fields of the older parks, how their configuration could favor hitters over pitchers, how to mitigate that architecturally so that the park played fairly to both, and how the fans being close to the action played to the home field advantage. He could speak from experience what a difference it made to play in the earlier ballparks like Crosley Field in Cincinnati or Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, and how that differed from the multi-purpose parks of the time. Yet because of his more notable athletic achievements in uniform, Frank's place in the lore of baseball park design in the last quarter of the century are seldom noted. But he is a hero in that regard, and a reminder that you never know where your best advice will come from. Surrounded by some of the best professionals in the industry was no substitute for the insights of the one person in our midst who'd actually played in these older parks we admired as models. You've worked hard to get this degree, but don't ever stop working hard to do something good with it. Thank those around you who support you and who love you. You're going to need them again. Get back to others everywhere you can, and the reflection of that goodwill will ripple on beyond, well beyond the moment. You can do anything with this degree. This degree is a confirmation of your ability to learn and your ability to succeed. It's a validation of your determination and values. It is proof that you have goals and you know how to reach them. It's a testament that you care and that others care for you. Use this degree wisely and have fun. That will be a winning combination. Go Blue. And now you know why Camden Yards is so beautiful. Thank you, Janet, for your thoughtful and inspirational remarks. And yes, I think it was just of the perfect length. <laughs> our program continues with our first student speaker, Yumei Liu, who is receiving her master's degree in movement science. Congratulations, Yumei. Good evening, everyone. This is my pleasure to welcome families, friends, faculties, and, to, and class of 2018. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate this exciting moment with us. And I'd like also to thank Ms. Jenny Marie Smith for joining us tonight. My name is Yue Mei, a second year master's student in movement science. And actually, this is my second time to be the student speaker. And last time was in the preschool. 
So, 18 years later, I am so excited to stand here today to share my experience in these two years at the University of Michigan. And I believe for all of our graduating students who are sitting here today, the time we've spent in Michigan will be one of the most precious memory in our lives. I still remember the day when I came to the campus. It was the first time for me to study abroad. I brought my camera and took photos everywhere, especially the kinesiology building. Besides excitement, I admitted that I feel really nervous in a new language environment and a different education system. I believe people who study in an unfamiliar environment would have the same concern. I thought it would, be, it, it would be a huge barrier for me as an international student because I have a different language, culture, and mentality. But I changed my mind when I had my first group project in the course Motor Learning. Dr. Meehan assigned us into different groups based on our interests, and my group's topic was to design an intervention to enhance the motor abilities of children with cerebral palsy. Our team members consisted of Dominic from Australia, Jenna Lee from Canada, Madeline from America, and me from China. I thought our team might have more difficulties than other teams because we come from different countries with different backgrounds. But you know what? We have a wonderful discussion at our first meeting. We called our group Super International Team. We combined lots of elements based on our individual experience into this intervention like Tai Chi, which is a popular traditional Chinese fitness exercise, and yoga, because Madeline is really good at it, <laughs> and robotics, then virtual reality. Those are what Dominic and Jenna Lee are interested in. We were proud of this intervention we have designed, and we hope it could be effective to facilitate the motor skills of children with cerebral palsy. In addition, it was amazing to work in every group with students from such diverse background and experiences. Human development depends upon diversity. People with different backgrounds, experiences, and goals make this world more beautiful. Throughout the 200 years history, diversity, equity, and inclusion have been intertwined in the fabric of the University of Michigan. I am so proud that I'm different, and so proud to have experienced the diversity of faculty, staff, and students here in kinesiology. That has greatly enhanced my time here. So for many reasons, it is great to be a Michigan Wolverine. The University of Michigan has helped me to grow in a variety of ways as an academic, a professional, and a person. And I'm sure this is true for all my fellow graduating students here tonight. Through rigorous coursework and exposure to all the resources and opportunities UM provides, we were all able to discover what we are passionate about and figure out who we are. Whether we've been studying at Michigan for two years, four years, or more, the support given by our faculty in athletic training, health and fitness, movement science, and sports management have provided us with numerous opportunities to try new things and discover our passions. For me, it's meant experiencing my practicum in Ann Arbor Preschool and Family Center to be a teaching assistant in the autism classroom, and participating in research with my advisor, Professor Eric, to access children's model skills and attending the junior club to discuss interesting topics in our lab. All these experiences lead me to realize what I'm interested in and what I want to do in the future. That is help more children with and without disability to live healthier and happier lives. As we celebrate tonight, I know I speak for all my fellow graduating students that we are thankful for, for the abundant resources the School of Kinesiology in Michigan provided us. And we're thankful for the support of our school's faculty, staff, and amazing students in preparing us to carry our passions into the next chapters of our lives. Today marks an important day in our lives, and also it is the beginning of the next journey. With all my best wishes, I hope everyone can start a new, a wonderful chapter in your life story. At the last, I want to thank my mom and my fiance for traveling from China to support me today. You. And also, a huge thank you to all my amazing family, friends, and teachers for being in my life. 
Of course, a huge, huge thank you to all of you for listening today, and I really appreciate it. To the School of Kinesiology graduating class of 2018, congratulations and go blue. <laughs> and next, I'd like to introduce our undergraduate student speaker, Marion Philip. Thank you, you may. Good evening. Welcome to all of the families and friends joining us this evening, and hello fellow 2018 graduates. My name is Marion Philippe, and I am graduating with a degree in movement science. The second semester of sophomore year, I decided to volunteer abroad, specifically to reconstruct schools in Nepal. I come from a home of chemists, so when I first stepped onto a work site, construction was as foreign to me as the country of Nepal. With the other volunteers, we were first tasked to each dig a four by four foot hole with a simple makeshift pickaxe. Although a pickaxe can be considered one of the simplest tools known to man, that tool and I were like oil and water. Not knowing what I was doing, I looked like a delicate swan not belonging on the muddy field, barely making a dent in the ground, wondering how I would finish this hole within the week. After a little training and mockery from the other volunteers and a few broken pickaxes later, a hole started to form. Waking up the next day, I was able to feel firsthand the muscles we learn about in anatomy <laughs> because I was sore but ready for more. Because it had rained the previous night and we had not covered our work, walking on the construction site the next morning, the holes were gone covered with piles of mud and rocks that had been deposited with the rainstorm. To be frank, the covered holes combined with my soreness made me question the reasons for coming in the first place. Despite the disappointment and frustration of having to restart from square one, other volunteers were making jokes about the situation, and we kept on digging while children began to watch us, even helping out. This was one of those eureka moments where a revelation formed because that was the instant when everything clicked. Although my six weeks in Nepal were the best thing to happen to me, they were also challenging. Without electricity for a majority of the days and, li and the little communication with home, I came to appreciate the relationships with my host family and the community at the work site, enabling me to create my own definition of success. I realized I came to Nepal to work and make an impact. However, I also began to understand that it was not just about being defined by the physical work one could do, but about building upon the emotional side of myself and allowing people to make an impact on my life. I share this story with you tonight in the hopes to make us all realize that our achievements may not come in the form of medals, awards, or money, but they manifest themselves in the satisfaction of relationships and the ability to seek our passions and interests in full force. I also share this story with you because Michigan is like those four by four foot holes turned into a foundation. Taking our first steps on campus, we felt like a small fish in a big pond, wondering what our experiences would be like and who we would turn out to be in four years. Even if we do not like to admit it, we all got lost trying to find the Physiology 201 lecture hall in the medical school and second-guessed ourselves while climbing the OBL stairs, which felt like hiking up Mount Everest. <laughs> we came here to get an education, but probably did not grasp, and maybe still do not totally grasp, the deep relationships we have built during our years on campus. There are times when we question ourselves and our college experience, such as the first week of the semester, first, second, and third midterm season, not to mention final season. We all thought about running away at least once in a semester, but realized we would not get far in our moon boots and snowsuits. With the guidance of professors, however, we started hacking away and learning the tools needed for classes, occasionally finding the perfect opportunity and rhythm. We were taught to make mistakes but to bounce back, like the holes that had to be dug twice, and similar to receiving my subpar motor control and biomechanics exam grades. 
They say moms find out everything, so why not confess to mine in front of a few hundred people? <laughs> Simply, we started building our own lives and started finding our support, our foundation, and our definitions of success within OBL, CCRB, and the DIAG. Like my memories abroad, our experiences at Michigan, and most importantly, our education will never be taken away from us. Whether becoming a doctor, a business manager, an agent, a lawyer, an athletic trainer, a nutritionist, or a career we have not yet discovered is our next destination. Whether we relocate to the West Coast, stay right here in this state to brave another winter, or move to another country, we will have Michigan. It started with our work and perseverance, the support of our families, and the dedication of the professors. Michigan taught us the old factory pathway, the finances behind athletic teams, and how to sprint the 400 meter dash when we did not hear the alarm clock for our beloved 8 a.m.s. <laughs> but it also trained us to be bold. Today, we live in a world where injustices and justices become blurred. We are now dealt with the problems from the past that cannot be put off anymore. It is our job to fine tune our decisions and to settle for action and not just words. Leaders do not accept anything less than a challenge. As such, lead to advance the world not simply for our gains, but to leave it a better place for the next generation to come, which we will have a hand in creating. On another note, Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously. And because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in gratitude. Therefore, before I conclude, I would like to thank a few groups of people. First and foremost, thank you to my family, and especially to my mom and my sister, because none of this would have been possible without you. You are my everything, and I love you. Thank you to the professors, assistant professors, lecturers, GSIs, and academic advisors who have invested in us and who have given us a foundation in their own unique way. Although we may not all know each other, thank you to you all who are graduating this evening. You graduate from undergrad only once, and I feel honored to be accomplishing this with such talented individuals who have strived for greatness. So, class of 2018, Dr. Susan Brown has always told us to write a story in her exams. Begin writing the next chapter starting tomorrow. There's no formula or correct way to do it. You just have to start. Travel, take risks, accept and tackle challenges, but stay honest to yourself and those around you. Define your own success. Rise to the occasion the proper and the right way. Remember to thank those who have gotten you to where you are at today. Simply lead as Michigan. Congratulations and thank you. And now I would like to introduce the Chair of Kinesiology Alumni Society, Heidi Haight. Thank you, Marion. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Heidi Haight, and I am the chair of the Kinesiology Alumni Society Board of Governors. On behalf of the entire Alumni Society Board, congratulations on your graduation. It is my distinct honor to welcome you as the newest members of the Kinesiology Alumni Society. All graduates of Kinesiology are automatically members of our Alumni Society. We hope that you will all continue to be strong, loyal, contributing alumni in the years to come and stay connected to the School of Kinesiology through its program-specific LinkedIn groups and Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds. Many of you have received the direct benefit of alumni networking and connections for jobs and internships. In fact, I've already met many of you through social media, networking events, and emails. I'm sure you understand firsthand the value of these golden alumni networking opportunities. Career services support is an essential component of the Alumni Board's mission and the School of Kinesiology Career Development Center. I also urge you to take advantage of your post-graduation first year discounted membership to the university's Alumni Association. 
Enroll online to receive all of your benefits. You are now part of the largest living alumni family. And as part of officially welcoming you to the University of Michigan alumni family, the Kinesiology Alumni Society will be giving all of you a black M pin to wear with pride and let everyone know it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine. On behalf of the entire Kinesiology Alumni Society, congratulations to you, the class of 2018. Go blue and welcome to the Kinesiology and University of Michigan Alumni Societies. I would now like to invite Alex Gitkin, President of the Kinesiology Student Government, to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Haight. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here to celebrate our graduating students. My name is Alex Gitkin, and I'm the President of the Kinesiology Student Government, an organization that strives to improve the undergraduate experience for the kinesiology student body. I'm pleased to announce that this year's senior class gift supports the Kinesiology Student Government Scholarship. The scholarship is reserved for a student who has profoundly demonstrated the characteristics that the School of Kinesiology embeds in every student. Respect, academic excellence, progressive thinking, and leadership. The 2018 recipient of the KS Cheese Scholarship is rising senior Karina Grain. For those of you who have donated, on behalf of the entire School of Kinesiology, I want to thank you for your generosity in helping the class of 2018 set the foundation for our school's future. It is also my honor this evening to present the 2018 Students' Excellence in Teaching Awards. This award gives students the opportunity to recognize School of Kinesiology graduate student instructors, lecturers, and full-time faculty. Uh, kinesiology students nominate individuals and a committee of student organization leaders select the winners. The recipients are chosen based on their superior classroom teaching and innovative instruction, their dedication to challenging their students to learn and explore educational and professional opportunities, and their concern for students inside and outside of the classroom. Because of the outstanding quality of our teachers, we have an unprecedented number of award winners this year. Here's what some of our students had to say about our first award winner. He's a good leader and teacher. He's so funny and chill. He makes lab fun and easy to ask questions. He is very considerate and caring for his students. He asks critical questions to help our class think deeper about discussions. I would like to invite graduate student instructor Tiwa Ajibua to the stage to accept his excellence in teaching award. Congratulations. Here's what some of our students had to say about our second award winner. He's so willing to meet outside of the classroom and add extra office hours to help. He's highly motivated in his field and has a knowledge base suited for teaching. He's able to communicate and explain practices and policies in a clear and concise way and is a great GSI. He brings a positive can-do attitude to class every day that makes the atmosphere enjoyable. He teaches his students how to understand what's happening in labs, how to be successful in labs, and how to enjoy what you're doing. His easygoing, joyful energy creates a wonderful learning environment, and he teaches in a way that students can relate to and understand. Congratulations to graduate student instructor Michael Schley on receiving an Excellence in Teaching Award. Unfortunately, Mr. Schley couldn't be here tonight, so we will present him his award at a later date. Here's what some of our students had to say about our third award winner. She really cares for her students and what they learn. She's an interactive and energetic teacher who gets students engaged. She knows the subject matter very well. She wants her students to succeed. 
Her hands-on class style and high energy in the classroom makes me feel comfortable and confident to ever use my skills as a professional rescuer. I would like to invite lecturer Heidi Harris to the podium to accept her excellence in teaching award. Congratulations, Dr. Harris. Here's what some of our students had to say about our fourth award winner. She's helpful, loves her career, and loves to see success in her students. She's enthusiastic, listens to students, and works together to help solve problems. She's flexible, understanding, and dedicated to students in developing an understanding of material inside and outside of lecture. Congratulations to lecturer Michaela Thatcher on receiving her Excellence in Teaching Award. Unfortunately, Dr. Thatcher couldn't be here tonight, so we will also present her award at a later date. Here's what some of our students had to say about our fifth award winner. She goes above and beyond for her students and works hard to form genuine relationships with them. This allows her to be an even more effective teacher and makes us all feel welcome. She's my favorite professor that I've had thus far. Her lectures are engaging, entertaining, enjoyable, and informative. She wants us to learn about kinesiology because that's so clearly her passion. Due to her investment of time, the classroom becomes a dynamic place to learn. Through lecture, student presentations, labs, and other means, everyone has a chance to interact with new material. She's also very willing to work with those not doing as well in class and help them understand, con understand concepts. She makes it easy to be a good student. I would like to invite lecturer Kathy Kern to the podium to accept her excellence in teaching award. Congratulations, Ms. Kane. Here's what some of our students had to say about our sixth award winner. <laughs> I've yet to meet anyone who cares so much for teaching. He really cares about his students and remembers their names years later. He's passionate about what he teaches, which makes the classes a fun learning environment and gets the information across. I would like to invite clinical assistant professor Pete Bodery to the podium to accept his excellence in teaching award. Congratulations, Dr. Bodery. Here's what some of my students had to say. <laughs> this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> About our seventh and final award winner. Her class is the most innovative and impactful course I have taken at the University of Michigan. In addition to her knowledge and passion, she has done a great job engaging my fellow students and me through a variety of approaches, which created a highly informative and interesting learning experience for us. She has been a beacon of positivity, understanding, and enthusiasm. Her class was always full of energy, and the readings and discussion ensured that every class was educational with dialogue from all perspectives. We learned something new in every class, and she gave us the opportunity to have an impact at this university by working on a project that will have real-life implications. I would like to invite Associate Professor Kathy Babiak to the podium to accept her excellence in teaching award. Congratulations, Dr. Babiak. I would, now, I would now like to welcome Dr. Gregory Cardi to the podium, but before I conclude, I want to congratulate the graduating class of 2018. I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors, and forever, go blue. Thank you, Alex. Great job. Uh, research makes up an integral part of the ex academic experience in the School of Kinesiology, and we encourage our students to take advantage of the many opportunities available to them throughout their studies. For example, graduate and undergraduate students may complete a thesis while working closely 
with a faculty member on a specific research problem. Indeed, working with these students is one of the great pleasures of serving on the faculty of kinesiology. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge those students who have completed a research thesis this year. As I call your name, would you please stand? I ask the audience to please hold your applause until the names of all have been announced. The graduate students completing a master's thesis are Lexi Beamer, Feasibility of the Impact Intervention to Enhance Movement and Learning in the Classroom. Jenny Lee Susanna Thompson Swallow, Pupil Characteristics Following Repeated Head Impacts and Concussion. The undergraduate students completing a Movement Science Honors Thesis are Konstantinos Christos Karabetsos, Quantifying fiber type specific adaptations in lipid droplet abundance and localization using immunohistochemistry. Emily Marie Krieger, Aging, Exercise Responsiveness and Insulin Sensitivity. Serena Jean Saki, Feasibility of Body Worn Sensor Technology to Monitor Arm Use and patient with breast cancer-related lymphedema. Congratulations to all. Now, for the moment you have all been waiting for, the graduates themselves. I'd like to ask Dean Plout Snyder to take her position on stage. And students, remember to pause for a photo next to the dean over here. There's an X that marks the spot before returning to your seat. Kinesiology confers degrees in the following areas. Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science. We will begin by granting of our doctoral degrees. The following description that I'll be reading represent a synopsis of the dissertation project that each of our doctoral graduates have completed under the supervision of a graduate faculty mentor. Dr. Keetra Armstrong, who is the Associate Dean for Graduate Affairs, will assist in the hooding of our doctoral graduates, along with their faculty advisors. Andrew Lapointe and Dr. Steve Brolio, please don't join Dr. Armstrong. Andrew LaPointe's dissertation is entitled, The Relationship Between Repeated Subclinical Head Impacts and, Electro and Electrophysiological Indices of Brain Function. This research focuses on how <laughs> repeated head impacts, like you're seeing right now, <laughs> in, the, in the absence of concussion, may result in alteration to the brain's electrophysiology. As many sports are entering an existential crisis, Andrew's findings will inform con conversations clinicians and policymakers are having surrounding the long-term effects of football participation. Andrew came to Michigan with a remarkable scientific background, but continued to grow and develop in his time here. He fully adopted the Michigan way, opening himself to new ideas and challenges, often thrusting himself into new cultures with unparalleled exuberance. Andrew is currently appraising his postdoctoral opportunities for the fall semester. Congratulations, Dr. LaPointe. Catherine O'Connor, please join Dr. Brolio and Dr. Armstrong. Catherine O'Connor's dissertation is entitled Concussion Among Military Service Academy Members and focuses on the risk factors, recovery trajectories, and the role of mental health prior to and following concussion in men and women in the armed forces. During her four years at Michigan, Kate amassed three degrees. 
a master's in public health, a master's in kinesiology, and a doctorate in kinesiology. Her didactic, <laughs> think about it. Her didactic training is eclipsed only by her aggressive research agenda, which included 21 peer-reviewed manuscripts and 44 conference presentations. These efforts were recognized by the Journal of Athletic Training in 2016 with the Kenneth Knight, Ken Kenneth Knight Award for Outstanding Research Manuscript and in the prestigious Rackham Predoctoral Fellowship for 2017-18. Kate's fellow students, colleagues, and mentors describe her as simply awesome. Following graduation, Kate will start a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Kentucky, where she will be studying beta amyloid and Down syndrome. Congratulations, Dr. O'Connor. So, please join me once again in congratulating our newly minted doctoral graduates. I will now turn the podium over to Dr. Armstrong, who will recognize the 2018 master's degree graduates. It is my honor and distinct pleasure to present to you the Masters of Arts and Masters of Science graduates in Movement Science and Sport Management. Jenny Lee Susan Thompson Swallow. Go ahead. Shreya Abahel. Lexi Beamer. Catherine Chung. <laughs> Hung Yu Lee. <laughs> Abigail Asma. Caroline Elizabeth Winograd. <laughs> Thomas Edgar Evans. Alexandra Louise Harrigan. <laughs> Alexandra Catherine Norton. <laughs> Lydia Hope Ellsworth. Michael Lee. Carly Jones Hershenow. You may Lou <laughs> Ken. 
Sikung Jung. Xinjiang Yu. Min Yang Lu. Jackie Wong. <laughs> Tiffany Christina Bevel. <laughs> Michaela Pierce. <laughs> Joel Lycia. Rayon Black. <laughs> Darius Jamar Murray. <laughs> Amina Peters. At this time, I would like to invite to the podium the Chair of Athletic Training, Ryan Parieri-Smith. Good evening. I would like to introduce the Bachelor of Science Athletic Training graduates. Brady Covert. Congratulations. Caitlin Ann Brinkman. <laughs> Samuel Schrader. Congrats. Evelyn Annette Lechner. Mark Muan Huang. Amanda Okashi. Emily Bluen. <laughs> Chelsea Nicole Hills. Shayna Sundok Durantis. Kelly Christina Jeske.
My job was easy, I only had a few names to read. I'm, I'm now going to turn the podium over to Dr. Natalie Col Cola Bianchi, Associate Professor of Health and Fitness. It is my pleasure to introduce the Bachelor of Science Health and Fitness graduates. Lorena Balich. Evelyn J. Vandeweg. Taylor Diane DeWitt. McKenna Elaine Mahasik. Andrea May Kostruck. Paige Marissa Mendel. Dana Renee Levine. Alexandria Alt Gregg. Jacqueline Kate Dosick. <laughs> Bailey Warner Baker. <laughs> Ashley Coney. Rebecca Lynn Myers. Adam Clinton Belcher. Madison Rotner. <laughs> Alyssa Lee Arnold. I'm now going to turn the microphone over to Dr. Leah Robinson and Dr. Katherine Clark, who are the Movement Science Program Chairs. I would like to introduce the Bachelor of Science in Movement Science. Sophie Hannah Wittenberg. Elizabeth Ayu Aby. Anne Kim Tran. Ooh. 
Elena Robin Godenkoff. Ahid Amid Bawala. <laughs> Zanid Rashid. Andrew Ainsel Nightquest. <laughs> Daniela Grace Smith. Rachel Ann Rockwell. <laughs> Haley Dennison. <laughs> Victoria Lynn. Kushad <laughs> Ashley Kirsten Spalding <laughs> Gaia Chicherkia. Rachel Lynn Barrett. Jordan Eric Minzer. Haley Petrison. <laughs> Taylin Sherigan. Daniela Rose Dalpet. <laughs> Samantha Rose Brainer. Rachel Dora Lieberix. <laughs> Emma Page Godinier. Taisha Fuller. <laughs> Caroline Elizabeth Bowman. <laughs> Elizabeth 
Biederman. Constantinos Christos Carabistos. <laughs> Brian Joseph Diffenbach. <laughs> Alyssa Rose Dillon. Danielle Anne Marie Holgrape. Madison Marie Hansen. Sabrina. Anne Bernardi. <laughs> Kelly Christine McGuppy. Maura Elizabeth Armstrong. <laughs> Alexandria Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Alexandria Elizabeth Snell. <laughs> Callie Sierra Cole. <laughs> Michelle Flora. <laughs> Shara Lynn Chevron. Dominic M. Maxud. Jacqueline Leah Katz. Oh, hey, Matt. <laughs> Matthew Gerard Brown. Marie Louise Carp. Jacqueline Michelle Pontel. Zachary. Alan Gert. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Marushman.
Emily Marie Krieger. <laughs> Alyssa Ray Gozen. Emily Nicole Elliott. <laughs> Carrie Margaret McConaughey. Jonathan Michael Mancini. <laughs> Rahu Mishra. Cal Richard White. Okay. Aaron Eugene Newby. <laughs> Emily Rose Osterman. Katiri Rose Rybicki. <laughs> Selena Monique de Figueiredo Dusso. <laughs> Abigail. Ray Drumright. <laughs> Samantha Ruth Parkinson. <laughs> Hunter Millet Holsinger. Jordan Philip Walsh. Jason Wang. Hollis Angel Moore. Lindsay Rose Mathis. Elizabeth Ann Carr. Kelly Nicole Hafers. Kristen Alexandra Stifler. Erin yes. Shai. <laughs> Jack Vincent Defada.
Zachary Allen Oz. Thomas Wynn. <laughs> Miriam Heshmedy. <laughs> Donna Lee Kurt. Margot Sierra Mistor. <laughs> Emily C. O'Neill. <laughs> Gabrielle Mary Leonardi. Aaliyah Ann Penner. <laughs> Christina Monique Hollis. <laughs> Robert Matthew Stietzel. William Baron Thompson. Hey, Jake Presto. <laughs> Allison Lauren Gosenschulte. Cassidy Ray Bauseaton. <laughs> Allison Nicole Ayafredi. And another. <laughs> Ariel Elise Ayafredi. Elizabeth Lusk. <laughs> Mattia Marie Krasicki. <laughs> Kristen Van Proyen. Thomas Lee Nelson. Sean Bradley Benoyer. Nicole Marie Montalbano. Lindsay Rebecca Katz. <laughs> Hannah Gordon Dalton. John, or Joseph John DeVita. <laughs> Danielle Rako Johnson. Better. <laughs> uh, 
Madeline Colleen Glue. Megan Ann Campano. Emma Lee Sheffert. She's tough, isn't she? <laughs> Jessica Ann Judge. Rachel Lynn Turkuski. Serena Saki. Avnit Singh Chada. Riley J. Horn. Tiffany Teresa Hackett. Sandoval Lopez Zeldon. <laughs> Melody Ray Allen. <laughs> Samantha Nicole Swenson. <laughs> Lindsay Eleanor Henriksen. Rachel Danielle Lesnick. <laughs> Anne Elizabeth Starling. <laughs> Rachel Nicole Reinstra. <laughs> she just wants the control. Samantha Hawk. <laughs> Madeline Rose Rogers. <laughs> Mallory Ann Hudson. Erin <laughs> Rosemary Almany. Keep the rest. <laughs> Marion Ann Philippe. She stood it up. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I'm now going to turn the podium over to Mr. Josh Murgos, IONM Program Director. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, the graduates, the Bachelors of Science in Movement Science, who have completed a concentration in interoperative neuromonitoring. Julia Gramatico. <laughs> Esther Min. Andrea Marie Russo. Amanda Catherine Peters. Sarah Elizabeth Doyle.
Ellen Margaret Miller. Shane Kelly Gordon. Jake Slominski. Julian Michael Moore. Jane Elizabeth Sevaleski. Michaela Ann Andrini. I'm now going to turn the podium over to Ms. Kelly Donahue and Dr. Mark Rosentraub, Sports Management Program Chairs. It is with great pleasure that we announce the Bachelor of Arts in Sport Management graduates. <laughs> Nadia Rupavar. <laughs> Catherine Fitzgerald Conklin. <laughs> Riley Nelson. Nell Francis Scholdener. <laughs> Jacob Michael Feldman. <laughs> Samuel Jacob Elrad. Noah Samuel Morris. Kristen Leilani Walzak. Jillian Nicole Dunstan. Ashley Pieper. Jennifer Rebecca Wagley. Sarah Elizabeth Jackson. Megan Takahashi. Nathan David Kramer. Tell Ross Sutton. Aaron Leibig. Haley Lucy Doctor. Congratulations. Kinsey Ray Francis. Ho Jun Jun. Ho Jun Lee. Adam Lenarski. Roxanne Nicole Glasser. Catherine Elizabeth Chopin. <laughs> Delaney Victoria Jodas. Nicholas Patrick Gruich. Riley Jacob Stewart Holder.
Ryan Michael Armbruster. John Michael Mason. Eric Joseph Shubatowski. Ryan Wen. Chandler Gregory Barnes. Shane Decker. Kieran Foreman. Garrett Alexander Wallace. Peter Alexander Clatterhouse. Charlie Daly. <laughs> Joseph Robert Templin. Samson David Weizuhunen. Congratulations. I should have waited for more. <laughs> John Wood. Christopher Addison Jacobson. Garrett. Garrett Philip Minko. Oliver Edgar Shirek. Rachel Nanette Bird. Congratulations. Austin Patrick Turner. Danielle Weinstock. Congratulations. Brandon Mark Kazakov. Michael Lawrence Schwartz. Lewis Robert Goldsmith. Edward Ross Lillenfeld. Thomas Allen Dozeman. Jordan Mark Kamina. Brett Stephen Rubenfire. Ready? Jared Burson. Kathleen Kelly Hartwig. <laughs> Bree Marie Merrick. <laughs> Nicholas Charles Crone. Anthony Candiello. <laughs> Harry Jason Benjamin. <laughs> J. 
Chase Dalton Winningham. James A. Campbell. Alexander Joseph Lorenz. Alexander Reed Needleman. Jesse Dante Lippenfoster. <laughs> Ryan Mark Feldman. Brandon Eric Levine. David Benjamin Katz. Tess Ann Morales. Jared Matthew DaCosta. Joshua Stephen Broner. Brendan Michael Skinner. Nathaniel Key Bush. Hunter Magelli. Daniel Lewis Mentz. I think so. Justin David Bergman. Joseph Benjamin Klein. Jack Michael Bouchel. Jesse Michael Waxman. Ross Andrew Florin. Dylan Garrett Deutsch. Rachel Sidney Roth. Sidney Gabriel Lipsitz. Gabriel. Lee River. All right, ready? Constantinos. Zavaris. Close. Ryan Tice. James Walter Fogg. Thank you. Garrett Charles Miller. Deontay Harris. Chandler Sloan Ryder. All of these students have completed the degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty of the School of Kinesiology. Dean Plot Snyder, it's my pleasure to present to you the graduates of the class of 2018.
graduates, please stand. When you put on your cap and gown this evening, your tassel should have been placed on the right side, <laughs> signifying that you had not yet graduated. On behalf of the Board of Regents of the University of Michigan and the faculty and the staff of the School of Kinesiology, I congratulate you on your graduation this evening. Please move your tassels now from the right to the left. <laughs> Well done, congratulations, and I'll turn the podium back to Dr. Templin one last time. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. As a fellow alum, Ann, Arbor's, Ann Arbor will always be your home away from home and you will be ever a part to the history of the School of Kinesiology and of course the University of Michigan. You are joining the largest team ever at the University of Michigan, 600,000 Michigan alumni. Congratulations. May you always uphold the excellent tradition that Michigan graduates define and the Michigan difference. Oh, and one last thing. Michigan time is over. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty and staff, thank you for enriching our lives, and good luck and congratulations to the class of 2018. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't thank our signers. Thank you so much. In just a moment, we will conclude our ceremony with song, but first I need to provide you with some final instructions. After we sing, we ask that you remain seated as the platform party recesses. The marshals will then dismiss the graduates row by row. Family and guests should remain in their seats as the graduates depart for the reception on the second floor of the Michigan League. The reception will be in the ballroom as well as the concourse in the Vandenberg rooms. See page three in your program for specific locations. Now please stand, you're already standing I think, and join Jeffrey Walker, a sport management master's student who will lead us in singing the yellow and blue. Jeff and Madison will then lead us in singing the victors. The words for both songs are on, the page, are on page three of your program. Sing to the colors that float in the light.
cheer, they're here triumphant, here they come with banners flying, in stalwart step they're nighing, with shouts of victory crying, we hurrah, hurrah, we greet you now, hell here they come, we praises sing for the glory and fame they have brought us, loud let the bells them ring, for here they come with banners flying, for we their praises tell for the glory and fame they have brought us. Lord, let the bells them ring, for here they come with banners flying. Here they come, hurrah. Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Meshach and the leaders and prayers. Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Hail, hail to Meshach and the champions of the world. We cheer again. We cheer for Michigan. Thank you, Madison and Jeffrey. And again, thanks to everyone. Congratulations. And we'll see you at the Michigan League. Go Blue!